Hello. Today we're going to do a portrait of George. Now George is a squirrel that comes over here and eats my bread. I like throwing bread out for him. Well, anyway, this is going to be George in acrylic. A portrait of him. I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you. Well, now the drawing of George is already finished, and that was a long, tedious project, but we've got it done. Now we're going to take our burnt umber and we're going to put it on our palette. Now we're going to take our number 10 brush and we're going to mix it in with the paint with lots of water into the paint and then we're going to cover the entire canvas with a burnt umber wash. And then we're going to take a sock, which is really absorbent. So we'll take it and we'll just wipe away all that paint. We'll take our number 10 brush with Hooker's Green. We're going to block in that whole background with Hooker's Green. The reason that I put it in fast motion is because it's a long, tedious project. That way you don't fall asleep in the middle of the video while I'm trying to paint it. And get that all painted nice and dark and all that hooker's green into the canvas just blocking in the background here All right, now um, the background is all completed. The next thing we're going to do is work on George's eye. We're going to start out with Mars Black. We're using our number 10 zero brush. Start out with the pupil first. Get that nice and black. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a dot on each side of the eye. One there and one there. Now we're going to outline the bottom. 
This will eventually become a shadow. Now we're going to shadow off the whole top part. Then nice and dark. And this is what's going to bring life to George. Now we'll mix our burnt sienna, which is a warm brown, and our white together. And we're going to fill in that bottom part. You don't want to go back and forth because it'll make streaks. But if you dab it up and down, it blends in really nice. Now we're going to get some of that paint up into the dark area. There we go. Get it blended in nicely. Now we're going to use, we're going to mix in burnt sienna and white. And we're going to fill in around the eye. And this is framing it in. And as you frame it in, you want to blend just the edges of your eye with the burnt sienna. It'll give it a nice warm touch to it. We're continuing to fill it in. We're using white now. We're going to brighten the top part of it up. Then we're going to brighten the bottom part. We'll get a little more white. And we'll add it there and there. We're going to fill it in. And now we're going to add some more, more of the dark brown. And that would be your burnt umber. And we're going to fill it in with your burnt sienna. And uh, that fills in nicely. Okay, now that we've got our undercoat there for around the eye, we're going to take a mixture of ultramarine blue and white together, which is kind of a sky blue. And we're going to put it in the dark part of George's eye. And this will be your reflected light. Now we're going to add two dots of pure white. Right in the center of each side. And we're just going to dab it up and down until it becomes nice and blurry. See how that looks really nice and, and round? Now that eye now looks kind of like a marble. What we're going to do is take our fan brush, put a lot of water in it, and a burnt sienna and white together, and we're going to put in our undercoat. This will make George's fur nice and warm. And we're just going to fill it in. We're going to use a little burnt sienna with your burnt umber. Mix it in nicely. Basically, you're just filling it in. You're going to be adding detail on top of it. But you have to remember, you always put your darkest colors down first before you add your light. It makes it look just much better. You can experiment with it. You, know, you can try light and then add your dark to it, but I don't, know, I don't have much success with that. Usually adding your dark first and then adding your light on top of it seems to work better for me. Okay, we're going to do some detail with your number 010 brush and looking at our photograph as we do this. That's really important. You continue to look on your photograph at the same time that you're drawing. It helps out quite a bit with the light and darks and what you need to do. It's just basically what you see. All right, remember we're adding our darkest first and what we're using here is a burnt umber. And now we're using a burnt sienna and then we're going to blend it in back and forth. There we go. And we're going to create the roundness of the ear. OK, 
Okay, did you see how I added the white over the top of the dark? See, when you add your light over your dark, it's easier to blend in. There we go with the ear. Add a little more light. And I'll outline it a little more. A little more detail there. This little dark there is a shadow. Now we're going to put our burnt umber behind George. And uh, once we get that in there, we're going to take our fan brush with a lot of water and we're going to fling that color right up into his tail and to make it nice and soft. And this is what we're going to do. See? Fan brushes are a great invention. They work so nicely when you're working with fur. Okay, there's some white. See how the fur just comes alive with your fan brush? You're just dabbing it up and down and uh, you can create fur, which is really nice. There we go. All right, that part of it's done. See? All right, we'll just add some more light. We're making the tail a little more fluffier. I'm kind of blending it into the background a little bit there. There we go. I'm going to put some dark down below. And that's going to separate. That's his elbow, actually. Kind of make George a little more round. Okay, now that we got that blocked in, we're going to work on his fingers. We're working on the shadows first. As I said, we're going to always put down your dark colors first, and then you're going to always add your light on top of your dark. So that's what we're doing. We're basically outlining the fingers with the dark paint. And the dark paint is a burnt umber. Get that filled in there nicely. Okay, we're going to add the light. We're going to bring out the fingers, putting the light in the center, and we're blending it in as we go. See how that works? Okay, we're going to take our number two brush. We're going to work on the bread here in just a second. Okay, now we've got our number two brush. We're taking our burnt sienna and our white together, and we're going to put in a, the undercoat for the bread, which is a burnt sienna and white will create a nice warm color. We'll get that all filled in there first. There you go. We get it filled in, and once it's filled in, We'll add a little more white for the highlights. Get around those fingers. Okay, now we'll take our... Make some more highlights on, on his fingers. And we got the white. Now we're going to work on the bread. Now on the photograph, 
where the light reflects is right there on the corner as I'm as you see that I'm doing right now I want to do is just dab it up and down to create the consistency of what the bread is so I'll just fill it in more on the bottom there and then I'll add some more white and I'm going to outline it a little bit brighter on the edge where the bread is. See how that just comes out? Now look at those fingers. Works out pretty nicely, huh? Okay, there he is. Now what we'll do... Get our black. Now we're going to mask it in. It just gives it a, a nicer and a more finished look to it. Yeah, the painting is finished, and this is George, and he is so cute. Okay, we'll sign our painting. Now we'll paint our edges. And this gives your finished look to your painting. And you can hang it directly up on the wall without a frame. There he is. There's George.